Hi everyone, welcome back, or welcome if you are new. Today we are on part eight of my Harry Potter room makeover. And in today's video, we are gonna be starting some decorating bits and bringing some things in. I've got a project I wanna do that's gonna be on top of the bookshelves that we'll probably start off with. So before we get started, if you haven't done so already, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and become a part of my magical friends. Let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, yes, we are going to be doing some decorating bits. I did put the tapestry behind me for today just to give you guys something interesting to look at because we will be starting that wall as well today. But for now, the first project that we're doing is going to be the project for the top of the bookshelves. So what I wanna do is utilize a lot of my empty boxes. So like this one for my burrow. It's empty, but I wanna keep it, and storage is always an issue for me, because I used to use my closets mainly for all of my storage, but I can use my spare bedroom for storage as well, and I do have the other side of the closet, but I know I'm gonna to continue to run into this issue, so that's when this idea came to me, to wrap these empty boxes and make them look like owl posts, and then put them on the top of my bookshelf, since I do have a large gap above them till my ceiling, so I did have one on there already and that's kind of like what inspired it because I just wanted to get it out of the way. I'm like, actually that looks pretty cute. And I have a few little owls as well that you can kind of like decorate in between them. But here is the one that kind of inspired it. So I've had this wrapped since Christmas and there's actually an item in here that I need to take out. So I'm gonna need to unwrap this one, take the item out and then rewrap the box as well. But this is the idea. So it has a wax seal stamp and it's got some like twine on here and this one's like red and brown because it was around Christmas time. But I think I will do that. I'll exchange different kinds of twine, but I do have some here. Here are some normal plain options. And I have a bunch of brown paper to use. And then these owls I got back on my Universal haul around my birthday when I went on that trip. These are actually Christmas ornaments but I wanna keep them displayed all year round. So I'm like, oh, these will be so cute in between all the little packages. I also wanna get some like stamps that say like owl posts on them as well. So I did order one of those, but for today, I'm just gonna focus on trying to get everything wrapped up and just to keep track of all the boxes. So if I need to use one of these boxes, I'll write what they are small on the bottom of them where you won't see it. But that way, if I ever need to find one of those boxes again, I can find them without having to unwrap everything. <laughs> so that's my idea of how to use all of these empty boxes that I don't wanna get rid of just yet. So let's go ahead and get started with the wrapping. Now we have the second box done. So this is an empty one. So I guess this is technically like the first one because I am gonna have to unwrap this one, but basically that's it. And I'm keeping the wax to do last. So I don't actually tie it all the way into a knot. I just do one little tie and then I use the wax seal to kind of keep it in place. All right, since I have to unwrap this one anyways, I might as well show you guys what it is. It's from Pottery Barn Teen. It's the Hogwarts Express clock. All right, here it is. It's so gorgeous. It's got some good weight to it. So of course it's the Hogwarts Express. It's golden. All the details look so pretty. And then it's not just a golden Hogwarts Express. It's a clock. Here's the front. So I gotta figure out how exactly I should probably look at the instructions before messing with it, but I'm thinking maybe that pops out, but then I can set the clock, but mainly I got it because it's just so pretty. So this is actually a Christmas gift from my parents, and it was around the time when Pottery Barn Teen had this on sale plus free shipping. So I think it retails for 78, but when it was on sale, I think it was down to 54, if I remember correctly. But yeah, I really like this. I think it's great quality. It looks really pretty. I mean, I wouldn't want to pay almost 80 for it, but if you can find it on sale, I think that's a great price for what it is. But super cute, it's gonna look so good displayed with the rest of my golden Pottery Barn Teen stuff. Right now I have all of it right underneath my mirror of Erised, so 
I'll go ahead and put that over there and now I gotta rewrap the box. And then I'll show you the wax process next. So I put all of the packages that I wrapped up on the top to kind of place it out and see how I like it while I waited to get the wax to start sealing it. And then I also ordered some owls. They're so cute. I had a couple of them, like I showed before. So I had this one and this one. But this one is new and I got it from Amazon and I will be hanging it so it does look like it's flying. I've had this one. This one I got at Hobby Lobby along with the cage and then I put the filler in. I had just some laying around. I got it at a local craft store, the filler. And over here, this bottom one I already had. I got that one at Universal. And then this cutie. I love this one. I think he's my favorite eyes and he's just so round and cute that one is also from Amazon but now that I have it kind of where I want them and then as I get more empty boxes I can always add to this I'm going to go ahead and add the wax seal all right so it's actually the next weekend and I still haven't done the wax seal part so I have all of them I just showed you all of them on the top of the bookshelf so I have it all planned out where I'm gonna put it and then in the meantime, I ordered a new wax seal kit because <laughs> that was coming. <laughs> um, I just thought that this way would be a lot easier. So it's like a hot glue stick gun, Bella. <laughs> they can see. So it just has this and then the actual sticks you put in it are colored. So it's gonna be so much easier and faster to do it this way. And then it actually came with a wax seal stamp, which is nice. I'll show you the design. Just something simple. I do want a, like a Hogwarts or Owl Post one, but I didn't order one, so <laughs> we're just gonna be using that. And then it even gives you some markers, so I think you can kind of make it a little bit more pretty. So there's some gold and silver markers, and it came in this little case, like how handy dandy from Amazon. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and give this a try. I think it'll be a quick process to do it once this heats up. So we'll go ahead and plug it in and start stamping on the wax seal. Right, they are all now back up and they have their wax seal on there. Aren't they so cute? I am so obsessed with how this turned out. And then eventually I'll get like the owl post stamp in the mail, hopefully, and I'll add those to like the corner of the boxes. But for now, this is what these shelves look like. All right, now that we have that little craft project done and a storage solution, now we need to work on this back wall and those boxes that are behind me. So this main box right here is my new couch that's going to be going in this room. And then this one is going to be something that's going to be going up on that wall and it's from Pottery Barn Teen. So I will be unboxing those shortly. But before I do that, I want to show you something I got in the mail recently. I bought it on Facebook Marketplace and I got such a good deal on it. I was actually going to order this myself just in a couple weeks once I saved up a little bit of money. But since I saw it on Facebook Marketplace for $100 off of retail, I had to snag it. So it's a Harry Potter lamp. This is the Hogwarts Castle and it's by Bradford Exchange but it is so gorgeous. So here is the castle up close. I just love this lamp. It's so perfect. There's a lot of Harry Potter lamps out there, but I really fell in love with this one. There's so many cool details. And then the lampshade is really magical. So you can kind of see there's a pattern on the inside of the shade, but when you turn it on, it's when it really reveals itself. So let me plug it in and I'll show you what I'm talking about. All right, so it's plugged in. There's a little switch in here. So when you click it once, it lights up Hogwarts. You can see that. Even the little boathouse is lit up. Can you see it? It's so cute. It's right down here. I think that's adorable. But then one more click and it turns on the lampshade, which reveals like the Marauders map design. And it's so cool. There's so many cool details you can read on here. So right here it says, Peeves may lurk here, which is really cool because that's more of a book reference than a movie reference. It says, keep out for ghosts. It's just so pretty. I really, really love this lamp. And then if you click it one more time, it lights up both. So you have all of those options. 
and I just think it's so cool. So this is from Bradford Exchange if you do want to purchase one or just keep a lookout on places like Facebook Marketplace. You might be able to snag it one day as well. But yeah, I'm really happy about it. And I'm so excited that I'll be able to display it soon. I'm going to be putting it on a little end table next to the couch. I don't have an end table just yet, but now I have the couch and the lamp. So we just need to get a table soon. But my main focus today is to kind of get this wall started and get the couch out of the box. So let's go ahead and start unboxing some things. I know you can't see my head, but here is the box. This is the one from Pottery Barn Teen. This is the Harry Potter Crest Tin Board. It's so pretty. I'll have to get closer so you can really get the details of it. But here it is. All right, so on the very top has this beautiful Hogwarts Crest on here. And then the rest is just kind of a plain pin board so you can decorate it however you want. I see a lot of people put pins on here and just collect all their pins, which is really pretty. But I think I'll put a couple pins, but I want to put some other like paper replicas on here and things like that but it's so pretty I just love it <laughs> so this is the size like in comparison <laughs> to me it's pretty big so that's the front on the back side just in case you're curious how you hang it up there are two little hooks right here that go onto the wall and it does come with the hardware so this is where it attaches so wish me luck on hanging this up. So I'm going to be hanging up the crest, if you can tell, <laughs> pin board right up there. And I just need to properly measure it now and level it out and make sure everything's good before I put in the screws and then hang it up. But that's where it's going. So let me go ahead and get that measurement out and then we'll start attaching it to the wall. <laughs> All right, so I went ahead and I took the tape and I put it exactly where it needs to be hung up on the back of the pin board and I just marked those spots and then I went ahead and leveled the tape and that's kind of how I do it when I level things out. I did a similar process when I was doing the curtain rod, so we're just kind of doing the same thing. The rest of this is just to visualize where it's going, so it's not really necessary to hang it up, but let's go ahead and now we got to start drilling in here. So there's no studs here, so we'll be going into just the drywall, so we will be using anchors and fingers crossed everything works out. So I'm going to pre-drill some holes in here and then we'll put the anchors in and then the screws. Okay, that's it. All right, now the anchors are going in. to put in the screws but the trick is for this is to leave it out just a little bit because that's what's going to hang up the actual pin board so don't want to go in all the way all right that looks about even now here's the tricky part so we gotta kind of keep these out to kind of hook them on there so let's see all right, yay, it is up. So there we go, we have our pin board. Now I need to still hang up some floating shelves. Let's see. So yeah, we are going to be putting up the floating shelves. These are the two that I picked out. I got them at my local hardware store, Lowe's. <laughs> they are, now they say that measurements, I forget. All right, so they're 24 inches wide and then they're 7.87 7 inches deep and one and a half inches right here, height. I guess. <laughs> so I have the two of them and those are gonna go here. So I just need to make sure it is level and then I have exactly where I want to drill in. And it says it has all the hardware included, which is nice. So let's go ahead and hang these up. So we have the top shelf on and now I'm going to go ahead and do the second one and then I will show you the complete look. 
So I do need more anchors to put up that second floating shelf, but it is getting pretty late today. Today is Saturday, so I'll just go shopping tomorrow on Sunday and pick up some more anchors and then anything else that I might need for this room. But in the meantime, the rest of tonight, I'm gonna start planning out the like collage wall. So I'm gonna put some prints and stuff on this side of the wall, and then I am gonna hang up this new item that I found from Mercari. It's something that I've been wanting, but I just haven't spent the money on it because it's $45 on Noble Collections website, but I saw it listed for just $19 on Mercari, and it's this Gryffindor Crest, and it's really beautiful. I really like this. I think it's gonna look really cool on the wall, and I think I'm gonna put it in between my two closets, so I have that skinny little wall, and it's gonna fit perfect there, and it's gonna contrast really well with that Gryffindor tapestry, so I think it's gonna look so cute. So I'm gonna hang this up there and then kind of plan out what I'm gonna be doing on the wall for the rest of my prints. But let's go ahead and get started on that. And then that way tomorrow we'll hang up the second shelf. All right, so for the Gryffindor crest, I'm thinking right about here in the middle here, I think it's gonna look so cute because this part is so plain. I might put even some other small prints on this wall as well, but I think this is gonna be really cute here. So I'm going to go ahead and hang this one up. All right, to hang up the crest, I use the tape method for this as well. So when these are up, there were that little tiny, ignore the X, that was for something else. I'm just reusing the same tape. And when that one's up, you'll see. So that way I can just take this off, level it, put the nails in, take the tape off, and then hang this up. So that's my easy way to do it. And since it's on the a little bit of a heavier side, I am gonna be hanging it up with these small little nails. Normally I try to hang up stuff with command strips, that way I'm like less committed to spots and I can move it easily without having to worry about patching up any holes. But let's go ahead and hang this up. All right, I did it. <laughs> so that is up now and it looks so perfect there. I try to measure it and everything to try to get as center and level as possible, but my level is very long. I don't have a smaller one right now. I don't know where our smaller one is. So I had to like level it using this one. So I did my best. <laughs> so I started laying out some of the prints that I have and then I have some of those signs as well and just kind of visualize what it might look like on the wall. I need to measure like what I have left from the actual shelf and over and what I can work with and then measure that out so I can actually see what will fit. I might have to go up taller versus wider, but this is kind of how I'm doing it. And then I'll start hanging them up with command strips. I believe all of these with just a few command strips will be fine to go up on the wall. And that's the plan, but I think I'm going to end this one tonight and then I'll pick up with you guys tomorrow morning. All right, it's the next day and I went to Lowe's and I got some more drywall anchors so I can finish putting up this shelf. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll move on to the rest of the wall. <laughs> Now we have the second shelf up and then we can move on to the rest of the wall. But I think this looks so good together and then we'll have the couch underneath it. Can't wait to put some extra things on here. So really happy with how this all turned out. Also, before I move on to the next wall, I wanted to show you that the pin board came with all of these pins in there. So that's really nice since they're nice and gold. So anything that I wanna hang up on there, like I was saying, I wanted to do a lot of paper replicas. These will come in handy for sure. All right, so one main thing that I wanna put back onto the wall is my little wand display, the DIY that I did in a previous video. But now this natural wood doesn't really match the colors that are in here. So when I was at Lowe's and I bought the anchors, I went ahead and bought some stain. So this is a dark walnut, and I think it will match the floating shelves really well for this color. I think it's gonna be perfect. 
and then that will go back I think where I had it before kind of above the light switch there and then I'll be able to put my wands back up all right I'm back from staining my fingers are kind of dirty but that's fine I do have some other prints that I want to hang up so this is my Hogsmeade print and then it's like a map you can see it's very faint I did think it was gonna be a lot more blue and pink that's why I did Hogsmeade for like honey dukes so it's not super prominent but I do have this gap between like where the door opens and then where the shelving starts and I think this will be a perfect little filler so that way we can fill up the wall and it'll still look super cute and then I have my Diagon Alley Mina Lima print that they were giving away at Barnes and Noble with the Mina Lima illustration version of the books. So I actually got it when I bought the second one. They still had them. So that was really cool. And it's a really funky length. I think it was 21 inches, if I'm not mistaken. So I was able to find this little hang up thing. It's very similar to the one I have for the map. <laughs> But I got this on Amazon and it's 21 inches exactly. So it looks so cool. I do wish it was like behind some glass so it's super protected, but hanging up on the wall, I mean, I don't think it's gonna get damaged, but until I can find a frame, I can order a custom one. It's just, those are a little more pricey. So I'll wait a little bit. And then for now, this will go up somewhere on this wall, I think. And the last thing that I have is kind of like a hang up is a Gryffindor little banner. This is from Universal, but I was able to snag mine on Mercari at a discounted price. I think these were going at Universal for around 25. They have a new version that's really cute too, so maybe the next time I go to the parks, I might snag that one. But this is very cute and, you know, to go off with my Gryffindor theme in here. So let's get hanging. I have those other prints. I have about a three feet kind of size that I can work with. So I'm kind of playing out with it on the ground first and then I'll be hanging it up with some command straps. As you saw, I've been hanging up some of the prints, but the wand display has finally kind of dried enough where I could hang it up. And now that I have this up, I'm not really loving, if you can see, the two different colors of the frame. So I do have a little bit of gold spray paint. So I went ahead and I spray painted one of my frames just to kind of test it out because I got these at Target and they're not too expensive, especially the smaller one. So I tested it on that and I really like how it looks. So I think I'm gonna take all these down and then take them out of the frames and then just spray paint this part of the frame and then wait for them to dry and then rehang them all up. But I really think it's gonna be worth it. I'd rather them be kind of more cohesive than all mismatched. So that's what we're gonna do. All right, I just got back from a spray painting them and it worked super well. Look how good this looks. It's just so it focuses on the frame. I think that's gonna be so much better on the wall, but I didn't have enough spray paint to like get all of the frames. So we'll have to get some more, but for now I at least got a few of them done and I really am happy with how this looked and it was really easy to do. I think I am happy with the placement for all of the prints in the wand display and for the wand display I still have 
more wands that I can collect and I still need Hermione's wand so I left that one as a gap. So if you're wondering why that looks like that, it's just because I need to collect some more wands. But I am so happy with how this turned out. And then I went ahead and put this Diagon Alley sign down here. I think I got that at Hot Topic. And then I put the Gryffindor little banner down here. And it looks so cute. So now I just need to put in the couch here. So that is inside this box. And that's the last thing I need to do. And then we'll be wrapping up this video. All right, it is time to take the couch out and start putting it together. So let's get to it. have the couch unboxed I'm going to put it together and then I'll show you what it looks like so there we have it we have the couch all assembled now and in this room and I think it's the perfect size and this couch is not just a couch it's a futon so you can push back the back of the couch and you can make it into a bed if you need to so I love like the functionality of the couch as well but yeah that is basically it I'll give you an overview of what this room looks like and I still have plenty more space to put up some more prints so I'll keep collecting those as well I wasn't really sure what the space would look like so it's kind of holding off for a little while so I'm looking forward to adding to that and adding to the floating shelf as well I can't wait to put some more of my collection on there and filling in the pin board as well so let me give you an overview of this wall to wrap up part eight of my Harry Potter room makeover. Definitely stay tuned for next week's video. I will be doing some more little projects around here and then I will give you a full room tour and I'll do a bookshelf tour as well. But as always, if you like today's video, please give me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and turn on your bell notification so you're notified during my next video upload. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day. Bye!